Alright friends, so now for each SQL data project, we have to make sure that we create a clear guidance about the index strategy. And everyone in the team has to commit and follow the strategy in order to make sure that each index that is created in the project fulfill a purpose. And that's because without a clear strategy about the indexing, I'm gonna promise you there will be a lot of redundancy, unused indexes, a waste of storage, and the whole system of your project is gonna be slow and bad. So now what you're gonna do, I'm gonna show you my indexing strategy that I usually follow in my projects. But I'm gonna tell you from now, there is like not one strategy that can fit any project and any scenario. That's why the team of each project should brainstorm in order to make their own strategy. So now let's have a look to my indexing strategy. Now, if I have to pick only one recommendation from me to you in this indexing tutorial, I'm gonna have this advice for you. Avoid over-indexing. Over-indexing is the biggest mistake and trap that a lot of developers do, where they think adding more indexes that sounds like we are speeding up things and our query is gonna be fast. But I have to tell you, this exactly lead to the opposite. And here's why. As we learned, each time you add a new data to your table, your index has to get updated, sorted, rearranged. That means having too many indexes, what's gonna happen, your insert update delete operations gonna be slow and this means your database is slower and not faster and one more very important reason why over indexing is bad is you make the database confused while creating the execution plan as we learned the sql database has to create the best execution plan for your query and if you have a lot of indexes in your database it's gonna make the process of creating an execution plan complicated for the database which makes it of course for database harder to choose the best path and index and as well you open the door for bad execution plans and this means it's gonna slow the query because first the database has to create the execution plan before executing your query so again it has a bad effect for the performance and as well there is another bad thing it's gonna make it harder for the database to decide what is the best execution plan for a query and having too many indexes might make the SQL database choosing a really bad execution plan. So over indexing confuse the execution plan and as well makes the query slower. So that's why I call this a golden rule and you have to commit to it. Just avoid over indexing because it is double edged sword. And here exactly you have to have the mindset of less is more. So having a few effective indexes is way better than having a lot of indexes. So keep it in mind and write it in your development guideline for the team with big statement avoid over indexing. So this is the first statement in your indexing strategy. So now let's check the rest. Alright, so now we can split the indexing strategy into four phases and each phase has multiple steps. So now the first step is we're gonna go and create an initial indexing strategy. So now once you start a new SQL project, you have to define the objectives of the project very clearly. So that means we have to make it clear what we are focusing on, what we want to achieve. And in order to define the goal of your indexing strategy, you have to understand your system. We have mainly two types of databases. In one hand, we have OLAB databases. It stands for Online Analytical Processing. The purpose of this database is for data analytics. And an example for that is the data warehouse. So in data warehousing, we go and extract the data from multiple sources. And then we prepare it and transform it and put it in one big storage. And we call this process an ETL process. And then the front end, we have like reports and dashboards where the data is summarized and aggregated and presented for the end user. And this these reports could be used from users in order to analyze and have insights about the data. And now in order to generate those reports, there will be like heavy reading on the data warehouse database. So that means there will be huge queries that's gonna access the database in order to aggregate and prepare the data for the visualization. But now in the other hand, we have the OLTP systems, online transactional processing. It is like an e-commerce, finance, banking, where you have at the back end a database where the data is stored. And on the front 
front end, we have like an applications for the end users. So now as the users are interacting with the app, this can cause a write operations on the database. So inserting new data or changing data. And as well, there will be read operations on the database in order to show the data in the app. So we have both write and read. So now, of course, we have to ask ourselves, what is the goal? What do we want to achieve? And here mainly there is like two strategy. Either you want to improve the read performance or the write performance. Now, if you are looking to the OLAP system, here it's really you have to understand the project. Where is the struggle? Sometimes it could be like the ETL process itself. It's slow and mainly the ETL is writing data from the sources in the data warehouse. And maybe you have scenario where it takes like every day 10 hours. And 10 hours is of course a problem because you cannot wait so long in order to get a new data, fresh data to the report every day. So you can make the goal of the project is to optimize the right performance. You want to speed up the ETL, but actually most of those projects having another issue. Well, it is the read operation on the database because data warehouses normally have really big data sets and at the front end, the reports generate large complex queries on the database. So that means the read process can be the pain point in each OLAP system. So normally the big goal in each OLAP system going to be how to optimize the read performance. But now in the right hand with the OLTB, we have different nature of database and scenario. What can happen, you will not have like big queries from the apps. You can have like many query, many transactions happening between the application and the database. So you're going to have like massive amount of read and write transactions. So the whole time we are reading, writing, reading, writing and so on. But with the OLAP, we have like something bigger and slower because in the ATL, we usually run it only once. That means we are writing only once a new data to the database. And this happens usually at the night. But on the transactional systems, you have a lot of read writes all time. Again, depend on the project, but usually the main pain point in the OLTB is the right operation. So it could be like this. If you are building your LTP system, the main goal is to optimize the right performance. Now, of course, the question is how to do that? How are we going to optimize that? Well, again, we have to understand the nature of the database. What do we have in the OLAP systems is usually like a data model where you have very big fact tables and around the fact we have like multiple dimensions that are connected to the facts. So those fact tables are really big tables in the database and each time they are used in order to build a report and the report is going to be using all time those facts in order to prepare the data for the visualizations and a lot of aggregations query going to be done on the facts. And now, of course, you have to answer now the question, which type of index should we use in this scenario? Well, we have a perfect one called a column store index. So the best practice here is, and you can make it as a strategy for the whole project that we make all fact tables as a column store index, because this is what we are doing in the OLAP. We are aggregating large data sets. But now the data model and the scenario is completely different at the right side. Here we're going to have like a lot of tables and they have like different sizes and so on. And there are like a lot of relationship between all those tables. So it is completely connected. So you have a lot of like primary keys and foreign keys relationships between them. And normally those tables are completely normalized table. So they are like small pieces. But on the left side, we have denormalized tables as a fact. So here is like one strategy that we can follow in the indexing of the OLTB is that we create clustered index for each primary key of our tables. This of course can improve a lot of stuff like searching, sorting and as well joining tables together. But of course, since we are focusing on optimizing the right performance on the OLTP, you have to be more sensitive by adding new indexes compared to the OLAP because each index you add, it could be a reason why the data is written very slowly. So in the OLTP, you have to be way more careful adding indexes. So now, as you can see, you have to understand the nature of your projects. You have to understand what is the main issue. Once you understand your project, you can go and define like a goal for optimizing the system. So either read or write or maybe both of them. And with that, you are making like the initial strategy of indexing your system. Alright, so with that, we have an initial strategy for our indexing and we have a rough plan. Now in the next phase, we have usage patterns indexing. 
So now we're gonna do a deep dive into our project. And the first thing that you have to do is that we have to identify the frequently used tables and columns. So that means you have to go and check the queries used in your projects in order to understand, okay, what is the most important table that is used in many queries? Like for example, here we have the fact internet sales. It is used like in many, many queries in our scripts. So here you are like developing a feeling about what are the most important frequently used tables? And not only that, you can go and check how we are filtering the data on those queries. So for example, we have over here, we are filtering by the order date key. Is this kind of filtering is used like in multiple queries. So as you can see, we have like here a couple of queries where we are doing always the same, where we are filtering the data by the dates. So with that, we understand there is like a pattern inside our projects where this column is used mainly on filtering and as well, for aggregating. So that means you do a deep dive in order to understand what are the most and frequently used tables and columns inside your scripts. And now of course what I usually do, I go and use the help of the AI and ChatGPT, where I give it my code and then ask questions about it. For example, this prompt it says analyze the following SQL queries and generate a report on table and column usage statistics. And for each table provide the total number of times the table is used across all queries. A breakdown for each column in the table showing the number of times each column appears. And I would like to see as well the primary usage of each column, filtering, joining, grouping and so on. And in the output as you can see we got like nice statistics about my script. So as you can see the most used fact table is fact internet sales. It is like 13 times used in the projects. And then we can see like statistics about each column that is inside this fact. So most of the time is the sales is used for aggregating. And as we saw the order date key is used like five times for filtering and the other keys is used for joining tables. So as you can see it's amazing right? Now we can identify which tables are important, which columns as well are important and we can like based on those informations maybe derive our indexing for our database. So with that we have identified our frequently used tables and columns and now the next step it does we have to go and choose the right index type. And as we learned before, we have multiple types of indexes and that's really depend on the usage and the scenario. So for example, if your columns are primary keys, then go with the clustered index. And if you are using columns that are not primary key, where you are doing joining, filtering, then think about the non-clustered index. And of course, if the table is very big, as we said, you can go and use the column store index. And if you are targeting always like a subset of data, only like one year informations, then you can think about the filtered index. And the last one, if you have like a unique column where you don't have any duplicates, then you can go and apply a unique index. So it depends on the scenario and the usages, you have to choose the right index. And of course, the last step in this phase is that you have to go and test your index, whether everything is working fine. So that's all for the phase two. Then we go to phase three, scenario based indexing. So here we have to tackle and focus on specific issues to specific pain points. So that means we have first to identify the slow queries. So it could be reported from users or the team is doing like analyzing on the logs and to understand which queries are causing like performance issues. And now once you get a list of slow queries, then you have to analyze them one by one. And it is time to dig into the execution plans. So as we learn, we can check how SQL is implementing our queries and start looking for areas, for example, where the SQL is doing a full scan of the tables or maybe using expensive operations like nested loop joins and so on. So once you understood where is exactly the pain point, the next step is that you have to go and choose the right index. So which type of indexes we're gonna use in order to optimize the query. And once you go and create the index, the last step is that you have to go and test it. So you're gonna run again the execution plan in order to make sure that your query is using the index that you have just created. So that means you have to go and compare the execution plans before and after. And if you see that there is no benefit, then something is wrong. That means you have to go and investigate more and analyze the execution query and maybe choose a better index way. And you have to do this process for each slow query until you get all your queries fast. But of course, don't forget indexing is not the only method on how to optimize the speed of queries. 
So as you can see through these three phases, we went from a very generic methods on how to index our system to something very specific and scenario based. So as you can see, as we're moving in the phases, we are doing more deep dive into our projects. So now moving to the last phase, we have the monitoring and maintenance of our indexes. As we learned, the job doesn't stop by just creating and implementing indexes. We have to be responsible by keeping eye on the health of our indexes. And here the databases offers a lot of statistics and metadata about your data that you could use in this phase. So the first step is to monitor the usage of the indexes. And as we learned, we can use the dynamic management views or functions that we can find in the system schema where we can see the number of usage of each index and when the last time our queries did use the indexes. So with that, we can go and find out all those indexes that we have created and never been used in our projects. And now the next step is that we can go and monitor the missing indexes. So here we can go and check what are the recommendations from the database where the database is reporting missing indexes from the execution plan. And again, we can go and use those dynamic management views or functions in order to see more details. And as well, we can go and monitor whether we have duplicates in the indexing. It happens a lot if you have like a lot of developers in your team. So it could be that they are working parallelly to optimize the performance of slow queries and then go and create multiple indexes for the same column. So this is something that we can go and check whether we have duplicates in our indexes. And if you have duplicates, then you have to go and find how you can go and consolidate them. Then the next step, we have to go and update the statistics. So as we learned, statistics are very important for the execution plan because the database engine use those informations to decide the best execution plan for a query. And if the statistics are old, then the database is going to make wrong decisions about how to execute your query, which might lead to bad performance. So here again, we have like special functions in order to monitor the statistics. But here my recommendation is that each weekend have a job that go and create all the statistics of your database. And the last step, we don't have to forget about monitoring the fragmentations. As we learned over the time, as you are doing modifications on the tables, what could happen, the order of the databases could get wrong, or there are like free spaces on the database that are not used. So we have like fragmentations in the index. And the same thing, we have to monitor the fragmentations of each tables. And here, if the percentage is between 0 and 10, then there is no issue. But if the fragmentation is between 10 and 30, then we have to go and reorganize the index and if it's more than 30 then this is alerting you have to go and rebuild the whole index and usually for the monitoring i go and build like automated dashboards in power bi or tableau where i go and extract all those metadata and create a nice dashboards in order to monitor the health of the database or you can go and buy some other tools that are advanced in order to do those stuff Alright, so this is my indexing strategy that I usually follow in my projects. And as you can see, each phase builds upon the previous one, moving from a general strategy to more targeted, refined, specific strategy, where we define first the goal of the indexing strategy of the project. And as we move with the phases, we're going to be targeting more specific scenarios. And this cycle keep repeating. It's not only one time. So you have to keep discussing, is the goal still suitable for the project? You have to keep analyzing the frequently used tables and columns and keep searching and finding those slow queries and always keep an eye by monitoring the indexes. And of course, I can only keep repeating this, avoid over indexing. If you like this video and you want me to create more content like this, I'm gonna really appreciate it if you support the channel by subscribing, liking, sharing, commenting, all those stuff gonna help the channel with the YouTube algorithm and as well my content gonna reach the others. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.